I, Nobat Mao, swear in the name of the Almighty God that I'll be faithful and bear true allegiance to the Republic of Uganda and that I'll preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution. So help me God. So I congratulate uh, Nyara from uh, Agago. Now regarding Honorable Mao, that's a different logic. The logic, of, of course, Mao has got his individual qualities as a leader, which I've been watching for a long time. But more importantly, this is the fourth attempt by patriots to unite the people of Uganda politically. The Mao is different from Beatrice Akelo. Hi, Akelo Beatrice Hakori. Swear in the name of Almighty God that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the Republic of Uganda and that I will preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution. So help me God. Akero is the youth league of NRM coming up, the young people coming up. Mao, it is my old efforts, our old, our old efforts of uniting Uganda uh, so that Uganda becomes stable and sustainably strong. So you can say the NRM uh, attempt has two thirds succeeded to, to keep the Ugandans together. But then, but then you know the. I hear rumor that some of you are Christians. It's not confirmed, but there's that rumor. You know that Jesus, with the, with the one who had 99 sheep, said, he must, I must go and look for the other one also. They, said, they told him, but why do you care about that one? You, you have 99 sheep. Mm -mm. I, I, I need the other one also. So in this case, my people who left are not one. They are, they are almost 30 percent, 30, 40 percent who left. So it has been my job now to bring them back with the idea of going back to what we didn't manage to get the, the, to, or to maintain the one of UNC, our, our people being together. You asked about uh, what the Constitution says in the event of uh, a cooperation. We are lawyers who drafted this agreement, and I can assure you that agreement does not conflict whatsoever with the Constitution. If it does, then you'll hear the speaker saying that now you have lost your seats. But. Uh, when people don't have any issues, then they start fear-mongering. A lot of the people are behaving like, you know, Chicken Little. When we were in, in primary school, there was the story of Chicken Little. Some little, I think it was like a, a nut, hit the, the head of a chicken, and the chicken went around saying the sky has fallen. Whichever creature the chicken met, the sky has fallen, let's go and tell the king. So there was a convoy of people running around that the sky has fallen. The sky hasn't fallen in DP, and the sky hasn't fallen in Uganda. So, uh, like I said the other day, when I was on a talk show with somebody, there was an accountant trying to give me legal advice. You know, it's like taking medical advice from Nobat Mao. I, you would be the biggest fool in the world. <laughs> 
So, there are those who want a state of panic in our MPs. We stated clearly that this is a cooperation agreement. Actually, cooperation is the lowest level of togetherness. Then you move to alliance, coalition, and a merger. We, we understand the constitution and the lawyers we worked with, I won't mention all of them here, but definitely that was not an issue that was raised at all, and it won't, it won't be raised. On the question of uh, conflict of interest, when I'm in DP, I'm talking about peaceful presidential transition, national dialogue, constitutional reforms. As Minister for Justice and Constitutional Affairs, I'm talking about the same things. So what, what is the, 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 the clash between, between that? These are two entities, each serving different interests. You are going to serve in a government that has a majority in parliament, has served for 36 years, and the DP has been on the side trying to pull that government out. So that is what you would be saying, but the interest within the two entities inside. I think I, I should ask you to give it the benefit of doubt because when you read the agreement closely, we, are, we have our freedom to disagree. The right to disagree is there, but on a no surprises basis. For instance, I cannot be in the cabinet and pretend that I'm supporting something, and then I come to parliament and I denounce it. That, that would be crookedness. If I can't tell you to your face that I disagree with you, do you know how hard it is to negotiate with President Museven? I want those who are yapping around to go and try it. Anyway, you are saying NRM and DP serve different interests. Now, that is the biggest hoax. All these parties, have you heard people speaking when they are campaigning? We want you all to be rich. We want water here. We want justice. We want peace. Are those different interests? I think it is about method. That's where we differ. But for argument's sake, let me tell you that the political parties in Uganda are not disjoint sets. You studied mathematics. You know disjoint sets. It means one set is here, one set is here. I beg to differ. The parties in Uganda are not disjoint sets. We have intersections. Now, looking for that intersection is my job and the job of DP. The one thing that all parties must defend. Now, assuming we are invaded by another country, will you say that NRM and DP will be saying, we welcome the invaders? because they, they, we don't like the government in power. I would be very surprised. I think we must learn from other countries. As you know, despite my young age of 55 only, I have been in this arena of politics for a very long time. And that's why sometimes people think I'm the same age with President Museveni. Because they have been reading about me from 1990 for so long. The Americans can fight in their country. They can disagree and call Joe Biden names and what. Once they are outside, you won't hear that. But for us, we seem to want to take every data linen and display it for the world to see. This is our country. Like I've said, we may have plan B, but we don't have a country B. So there's an intersection. I disagree totally with anybody who talks as if the parties don't have any common interest. I said the other day, of course, I have been attacked for saying it when I said other parties discuss money, for us we discuss ideas. That when other parties go to NRM, they go to talk about how to get money. For us we go how to talk about how to serve Ugandans. Now, the question from Uganda Radio Network, I don't want to speculate, but Uganda is in transition. The transition is not coming. The transition has started. And uh, we have only done what is a catalyst. 
One day I was talking on TV and I talked about how hydrogen peroxide can become water. It can become water if you just leave it there because hydrogen peroxide is one molecule, two molecules of hydrogen and two molecules of water. Oxygen, yeah, this is a scientist. So one molecule of oxygen can escape. But to speed up the chemical reaction, you put in a catalyst, potassium permanganate. So that's what DP has done. That's why you see everybody is running around. It is known as the shock do doctrine. We, we, DP has applied the shock doctrine because you know when you are shocked, you can even move away from your home even when you know where your home is. <laughs> so this thing has shocked Ugandans. People are coming to terms with it and uh, they don't know how it has been done, but there it is, deal with it, and, and see, see how to benefit from it. So, I don't think President Museveni has a right to appoint a president for Ugandans. I've been hearing a lot of people saying, oh, now this is going to be the next president, that one is going to be the next president, and so on and so forth. It is true. An aspiring president signed together with a sitting president. As to whether the aspiring president will ever become president, that one I don't know and I don't care, frankly. Let me be the Moses who will not come to the promised land. But Uganda must go to the promised land. Let me remain this side. But I want to push you to go. Please go to the promised land. That's what my job is. So don't count me among those who are dying to be presidents. I'm not dying to be president. But I'm dying to see Uganda not wasting time in the Sinai Desert of deception and confusion for 40 years. You know, the journey to the Promised Land is a journey of 11 days from the Sinai Desert on foot. Why did it take 40 years? Confusion. 2026. The NRM will have been in Uganda as a government for 40 years. That, that is our Sinai Desert. Ugandans don't care about what happens, no bad mouth. But go. Go to the promised land. Leave me. Leave me in the desert. I don't have to cross with you. Yes, please. Birthday parties. I want to dissuade you. Separate birthday parties from serious national issues. When anybody, whether by the name of General Mohozi Kainerugaba, steps forward, it is up to Ugandans to decide that. So I'm not going to be talking academically. You are really asking me to talk about academics. And uh, I, I will resist the temptation. I have a lot to say on that subject, but I, I've been advised that now I should be a bit careful. I shouldn't be talking. <laughs> Too, too much about things that are academic. Because my words are now heavier, I don't only speak as president of a party, but I also speak as somebody who is in the cabinet, which is an organ of government. And moreover, the portfolio I hold is the one that mediates. As you know, the judiciary is part of that ministry. And the, when the parliament is quarreling with the executive, it is the judiciary that mediates it. Now to the question of the law. I'll start with the simplest. Does the president of the party enjoy the right to make a binding decision on behalf of the party? I've done it before. But this one has heightened the debate because the stakes are higher. This is now about state power. This is about serving in the cabinet. But previously, we signed the, the agreement establishing the DP block. I never heard anybody talking about it. So we have raised the stakes in Ugandan politics. I want to admit that. The stakes are now higher than ever because everybody has felt this agreement under their feet. It doesn't matter where you are located. That's why people who are being so quiet on Twitter are raging. And they are not small people. They are big people. They are raging because the stakes are higher. 
the president of the party is the chief executive officer. The chief executive officer is the one officer who can bind the party by his or her decision. Just so that you have even more evidence, that matter was even raised in court. And I will ask the National Publicity Secretary to share through the media pages a, a judgment. When we were having our usual battles, in 2020, you know that some members of the party went and held a meeting and appointed themselves leaders. Uh, you know, DP is the party of uh, drama. So, we went to court to have the court evict to them. So they challenged us and said, the lawyers that I had instructed, because I instructed the law firm, and they said, the president has no power to instruct the law firm. So the judgment is very clear. And I think it is judges to interpret the law. Of course, in Uganda now, bloggers have become lawyers. They are, they are giving legal opinion. I hear bloggers. And of course, our good journalists. They have all become constitutional experts. So uh, I want to tell you that that matter has been tested in court and it has been resolved very clearly that maybe I should read it to you. Bring my phone. Just so that we leave this place when we are clear. I like to... Yeah, this is what the court said. Let me ask uh, my publicity sector to read it. You have heard my voice? Yes. Uh, determination. According to the Constitution of Democratic Party, the National Executive Committee is the directorate of the party and in particular its functions include B. To supervise the administrative machinery of the party at all levels and take such measures as it deems fit to enforce decisions and programs of the party. To do all other acts and things as it shall deem necessary for the efficient functioning of the party. The president shall be the chief executive as well as the chief spokesman of the party. According to Black's Law Dictionary, 11th edition, 2019, page 715, chief executive means the head of executive branch of a government, such as the President of the United States, a corporate officer at the upper levels of management. It would appear that the President is vested with more powers than other officers on matters of management of the party in the day-to-day -day affairs of the party. This gives such officer leverage over other officers in binding the party. The National Executive Committee is supposed to be the overall organ of the party that would take any binding decisions on the party. Therefore, actions of the president when executed in the course of his duties would bind the party or the party's National Executive Committee would have to ratify such actions or decisions. Yes, it's clear. That's not DP. That's not even our constitution, but that's the interpretation. Now we come to the question of consultation. I have already told you that the moment we started this discussion with President Museveni, I called the whip of the parliamentary caucus, the Honorable Peter Okot, and I asked him that I would love him to convene the MPs I have something delicate but important to share. So four of them turned up in, at Africana by the poolside. There was Honorable Richard Lumu, the MP for Mitiana South. There was Honorable Geoffrey Okello, MP for Noya East. And the Honorable Court Peter, MP for Tochi County, Omoro District. And later, 
Honorable Sebamala Richard, MP Koto Central. I briefed the MPs about what was going on. In line with what we had agreed as part of our strategic plan, you know, after the 2021 elections, we met at a cellar hotel to make our strategic plan. And we set three objectives. State power, winning power outright as DP. Two, sharing power substantively or substantially with any government in power. AGIP, for brief, A-G-I-P. Any, if it was a government headed by another party, we put it in our document as a strategic goal. Three, to lead the opposition and thereby be the main challenger to any incumbent government. We did our strategic planning as DP. It is there in black and white. Therefore, the discussion with President Museveni and the NRM must be seen in the context of DP's strategic objectives. We believe in what they call OSD. O, objectives. S, strategy. T, tactics. Of course, people confuse the difference between strategy and tactics. I hear people say, so-and-so is very strategic. So-and-so is tactical. Basically, a strategy is how to solve the whole problem. Tactics is how to solve part of the problem. What we are doing can have strategic consequences, but it can also be tactical because it solves part of the bigger problem. So, DP set those strategic objectives. We met. We realized that basically we are on our own. NRM is shooting us. All the other opposition parties are on our neck. When we presented our Grand People's Coalition framework document to the opposition parties, they basically th threw them at us. They don't want to commit. They want what, what they call a DHEIA. And that is why I insisted to President Museveni that I don't want this ABHEA of saying, let's work together, and then you work. Said, my party must have its key issues captured in the document so that our members can hold us accountable, so that Ugandans can hold us accountable. So I consulted the parliamentary group. I gave my smartphone in which the full original draft of the agreement was. I gave it to our MP, Honorable Richard Loom. I said, read. He's the legal, deputy legal advisor. And I saw him swearing that he has never been consulted. Yeah, but, but now, welcome to politics. Did I consult the management? You came late. Before you came, I'd already told the media here that I briefed fully the top leaders of the party. And, and even a handful. By the way, I, I, I even briefed other stakeholders who I want to mention here. But uh, it is my duty as president of the party to take responsibility. I take the biggest responsibility. So if I'm to be hanged for this, it is OK because it is me who committed my party. But I am seeing that slowly by slowly, members are beginning to appreciate that for once, they have somebody who they can talk to. And somebody who will continue being who he is. When I gave my speech in Isinjiro, people said, oh, why are you now telling the NRMs that DP has a share in NRM? I said, yes. All those who died in Luero Triangle, the majority were DPs. The blood that was shed to bring NRM to power was largely DP blood. And the cause was DP's cause because our votes were stolen. President Museveni didn't have any votes to be stolen. It is our votes which were stolen. So we, the way he claims that there can be no DP without President Museveni, there can also be no NRM without DP. Because DP 
was part and parcel of that struggle which brought NRM. And that is why our top leaders joined the NRM government. Now when I listen to questions from uh, this gentleman here of conflict of interest, why were those questions not asked in 1986? You can see that they are debating Mao. They are not debating what we have done. Eh? Why, why is it that when it comes to Mao, somehow they want the facts to be different? Ladies and gentlemen, you are entitled to your own opinions, but no, you are not entitled to your own facts. There was no question of conflict of interest when our former leaders served in the... I've seen a video going around with members of the DP National Executive Committee taking oath as ministers. You intelligent people have not talked about the conflict of interest. If I win election and become president of Uganda, I'll at the same time be president general of DP. Will that be conflict of interest? So I, I, really, I really think that uh, uh, let's raise the level of debate and think about the bazukuru. All of you are going to have children, those of you who are not ready have, and I hope those who don't, you are working on it. And, uh, and please work hard because the Uganda we are building will be wonderful. It will be united, it will be democratic, it will be peaceful, it will be prosperous. We just found the biggest deposits for graphite in, 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 in Karamoja. It is the biggest deposit in the world. And you know, because of climate change, the world now is going to electric cars. Uganda will be the biggest supplier of the graphite needed for batteries to run electric cars. This country is going to be rich and powerful. Don't miss the chance to, to make your contribution to it. You have already asked. <laughs> Oh, my God.